All right, I'm testing out some new live streaming software. So I'm just doing a little retouching on a picture I processed this morning. Um, I did a Facebook post last night about a method using some multiple black and white adjustment layers to kind of get bring out more detail of these, these rocks. So uh, I'm going to go through that again with a video and just see how this new software works. So uh, that top 10 thing you see there in that top left corner, that's a new, it's like a web service, um, uh, I don't know, Chrome thing. Um, that's just the watermark until uh, I decide if I want to subscribe to it. So um, hopefully you'll be able to see everything below that um, where I have so adjustments. Okay. Let me see if I can get properties in a place where you can see that. Let me drag that up to there. Get in there. Good. So you should see my, all right, let's drag this down some more. I'm just going to set up my interface a little bit. Uh, cool. It spins down like that. Um, so we have properties and then layers. And I'll be hopping back and forth between layers and channels a bit here. So just keep your eye on that. So this is up at Muley Point um, 2017, the fall, kind of early morning uh, in southern Utah, southeastern Utah. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, delete this curve layer I made. Um, and we're going to make a black and white adjustment layer. And with this layer, you can hit auto. It kind of doesn't really do much here. Um, what I'm going to do is drag down the reds and yellows um, and then see about bringing up the blues. You might not need the blues. You just leave it like that. What I'm looking for is darkening some of the kind of lichens and things um, on this red rock here. So there's eh, these patchy things here, these white things. I want to bring a little more separation between the white stuff here and this kind of reddish yellow rock. So you see that, let me make this a little darker, bring it back up. So what I'm going to do here is dial this in a little bit. I'm not going to get too crazy here because we can use other things to, to control that. Dial in something like that. And I'm going to just invert this mask, um, make a new adjustment on top of that. So new black and white adjustment. And here I'm going to lighten the reds and the yellows and darken the cyans and blues. So it's going to darken some of that background stuff there. Um, and see, see about lightening the, the kind of texture and stuff in that rock on the right, top right. Um, so what this layer is going to do is catch everything that this bottom layer that's currently masked out, uh, that, that adjustment layer. Um, Oh, check this out. We're going to lighten the magentas. Watch what happens in these areas in the, the canyons um, in the background. So lighten up the magentas and these rings on the canyons will start to lighten up also. So trying to like see what works with the whole rest of the image here. And then I'll use this layer here to kind of blend in some of the separation. So seems like a good starting point. Um, go back to these settings. I darken just a little bit, just like that. So now what I'm going to do is disable that. So I'm just hitting shift and clicking in the layer mask icon to disable that. Um, and I'm going to use these tones to actually mask in how much of these, this darkness in here I want. So I'm going to hop over to the channels panel. Uh, command and click on the RGB channel. It's going to load the channel as a selection. So all the channels. I'm going to hit Command Shift I to invert that selection. And back to layers, Command H to hide that. Um, and then uh, re-enable the mask. And now with the brush tool, I'm going to paint with white. We're going to change the flow. So Shift 4, Shift 3 for the flow. Uh, make the bigger and just going to paint in. And you can see how that starts to get a little more separation in there. Oh, yeah, I'm right. Painting the right opacity. Ask. This is not showing up. Normal mode. Let's see, try this again. Brush. wonder if this is just not catching up because I have a bunch of stuff running here. I 
There we go. So you see the, the mass starting to come in a bit. Um, I might hit the, the gradient tool instead, make a 60% or so. So I'm just going to drag it from the bottom. You see that I'm starting to desaturate the image now based on that adjustment layer. If I turn this one here on, it's going to catch everything else that this lower one is not catching. And now you can see that separation start to come in. And let's do it. So you see that darkened up a bit there. We'll come back and brush that back out. Maybe just do that. So that's kind of a lot, right? But this is cool. You can hit Command M and we're going to darken that mass. So everything that was lighter is going to get um, masked out. I'm sorry, lighter in terms of what's being flipped in the, the channel separation. Um, let me hit OK. So now the, the darker tones are being more affected by this mask, and the lighter tones are not. So there's bef without the mask, with the mask, and without the layer, and with the layer. Now. I'll grab a brush again and uh, still have my selection available. And we're selecting the uh, the darker tones now, or continuing to select the darker tones, make this a little bit. I think I moved the, the mask there. Brush. And using control and option to make the brush larger and smaller there. And I'm just painting a little bit in there so we can continue that going back. Um, all right, now what else? Let's maybe darken just a little bit on this side, just to bring in the image a little more, darken these little tones. And I'm gonna come in and darken that area just a little bit also. That seems like it's pretty bright compared to these other things. And do you see here when I brushed on that, on that bush, because it is a yellow bush, um, this layer here darkened those. So what I can do is get a brush again, paint with black, make that a smaller brush, and paint some tone back into there. Make it a little bit lighter. We'll do the same thing with these brushes here. I'm going to make a really in, um, dense brush just to bring that back. That's too much. Um, yeah, it's about an amount of 40. So I'm just painting with black to uh, lighten those edges up there. In this stage, I'm not going too crazy with um, what's becoming light and dark. I'm just kind of getting a good initial black and white adjustment. Uh, and then I'll use layers and everything else, curves and stuff to, to do the rest. All right, so you see there, I darken that way too much with that black and white adjustment. I'm going to come in and paint with black on this edge here. And let's make a darker brush. Uh, there we go. Get that back to kind of what was the original tonality without that darken, uh, kind of uh, darken that yellow, blue, yellow, and red there. All right, that's a little bit better. I'm not going to worry about some halos and stuff. It's, you know, it's not that noticeable because of the, the way that uh, the gradient went in there. Darken a little bit more up there of the mask. So lightening the the yellows and reds. All right, so that's a just waiting for my stuff to catch up. There we go. Um, let's see how that looks. So you see, we've kind of brought a whole lot more separation into there, um, kind of connecting the foreground to the background a little more. And now what we'll do is a little more lightening in the background uh, to connect that even more, to separate this out a little bit more as we can see into there. So I'm going to deselect because um, I still had that uh, those dark tones selected. Make a curves layer um, here. You know, if I'm happy with this, I can compress these down. Yeah, why don't we do that to save on RAM a little bit? Um, I'll Command E to merge those, and then go to Image and Grayscale, and don't flatten. It doesn't matter because there's nothing going on here, but um, just saves a step. Now, let's see, we're going to uh, lighten up some of the tops of these mesas back here in the canyons, um, come in and get a little more separation with these, uh, the rock in the foreground, and maybe darken the sky there just a touch. Um, there's some, some separation in these clouds here on that top edge. We're going to keep that. Um, and then 
Yeah, so get that centered there. Let me see. I'm going to check out and see if anyone's actually watching here. Um, let's see. Oh, someone's watching. Hey, how you doing? Um, if you want to say hi, we can do that. Um, this is just a test. I'm not sure when you joined in here. So um, I'm testing out some new software. Uh, so I'm just going through some edits here just to, just to test stuff out. All right, so let's see. Where was I? We're going to go back to Photoshop. Uh, let's see, we're going to make a let's start with a soft light and see how that looks. So way too much separation in the bottom there. What I like to do is bring up the white point, drop down the black point of that curve layer, and just to soften some of that soft light. Um, eh, it's that's not really doing much for us. I'll use that later. Um, what I want to focus on are these these mesas and canyons back here. So let me lighten this up. I'm going to make it way too light. Um, call this outflanking. Uh, and all right, that's starting to not be so bad. Um, as a starting point, ignore everything that's happening in the foreground. I'm only paying attention to these mesas and the canyons. Um, so invert that mask. Now what I'll do is, uh, let's see, this, I'm gonna get the, the quick selection tool. And this is a down and dirty selection. Um, get all this stuff here. Hopefully it catches up. And I'll come back and mask out that top area. So deselect this top area. And with the brush, we're going to paint with white. Um, paint with a pretty low opacity and flow. And make that a little smaller. So I'm painting with white in that mask and bringing out some of this stuff here. Let's see how that looks. Um, what I can also do once this is done here, let me deselect. And why don't we do a, uh, a luminosity mask? So again, I'm going to select. Oh, why don't we select the highlights this time? I will remove that top section and then paint in some tone, uh, some lighter tone at the top of those things. So command and click in the gray channel there. That's going to load the, the luminosity as a selection. Hide that. Oh, before we hide it, let's unhide it for a second. Um, Magic wand again, or the uh, quick selection, and deselect that top area right along there. Now, when I paint, I don't have to worry about catching any of that. Uh, now we'll hide it. So we're going to be painting some lighter tone in with this that layer there. So brush tool, kind of not be too uh, concerned about how much overlap. And mostly on these edges, I want to keep those kind of triangle shapes on this edge a little more active there. Um, and see how that's starting to look. It's a little more there. All right, so you see, I mean, I'll take that out right there because that's becoming a little bit too bright, that bright spot there where the sun's catching the, that one edge. So I'll paint with black, um, make a smaller brush maybe a 40% opacity, tone that down just a touch. So when I'm doing that, I'm only painting in the highlights still based on that the luminosity selection. There we go. A little bit better. Now let's see about this soft light blend here. Deselect everything. Um, oh, let's see. Maybe this got a little too... No, we'll use that. Um, so instead of doing the selection again, I'll just go back and reselect the, those lights. Um, oh, I have to deselect because I didn't invert that. If I invert it there, you see everything just turns into a mask, which maybe isn't so bad, actually. Yeah, you know, mistakes happen and they end up being okay. But it did lighten the top too much. So with a brush, deselect a dark brush, I'm gonna make it kind of 
50 percent uh opacity and flow and just darken or remove the adjustment from the top there so uh, let's do that again there we go and while we're at it why don't i no selection um Let's try the multiply blend mode. Um, this is cool. So I'm going to make this real dark. So everything is going to get way too dark. Um, lighten it a little bit on this is the, the curve here. Um, and then invert that mask, then shift to disable it. Grab that as a selection. So command shift in the, the channel there. Then re-enable the mask. And I hit uh, H to hide those marching ants in a brush. Uh, let's see. They're kind of low because multiply is a, on the, the passing of flow is a pretty intense adjustment. And I want to paint in just along that top edge. I could use a gradient um, because see how I have a white uh, border there. This is a 98% border. That top edge is disappearing. So I want to bring a little more separation between my picture and the edge of the frame. So get a smaller brush here and catch that corner. See how much we need to go on this brush and kick it up to 90. Oh, huh? you got to paint with the right color. Um, snuff, stuff's not happening. You have to <laughs> check to make sure you're painting with white to get in there. All right, zoom out a little bit. <clears throat> Let's try a gradient and just right there, just to bring it in on the top. See how I start to separate the clouds right on the edge, come from that angle. So with that, um, that adjustment, or sorry, the, the selection based on, on that multiply, none of this stuff in, well, not none, but um, the majority of these tones in here are not being affected when I'm using the uh, the luminosity mask. So let me do another gradient. Um, you can kind of go pretty far. So it did catch there. Um, that's fine. We can come back and paint that out. So uh, paint with black this time. Uh, brush, larger brush. Then we'll just, oop, too far. So the edge of the, the feather caught the top there. So I'm painting pretty far down and just letting the feather catch where I want to um, remove some of that adjustment and take a look. Still a little too much being affected here by that multiply blend mode. There we go. Um, so I'm going to cut this stream off now. Uh, looks like the health is not so great on this stream. But anyway, that was a good test, I think. Software seems to be OK, other than the needing to run through Chrome. Um, so anyway, uh, leave a comment if uh, you have any questions about some of this technique. And uh, this is not the exact part I'm going to stop at, but I think it's good enough for this test. So um, thanks for watching. And I'll hopefully be able to do more of these now. All right, thanks. Take care.